It's the Rink Live podcast on a sunny mid-February day. At least it feels like that because we don't get spring this year, apparently. Not that I'm bitter. Uh, hi, <laughs> Jess Myers along with McHatton, the Rink Live podcast. I want to say a big thank you, first of all, to our sponsor, NCHC TV. And uh, this year, when I say Skull Vikings, it's going to have a whole new meaning. We've got, uh, we've got the first head coach of Augustana University, the Vikings, Garrett Rabloin joining us. Garrett, first of all, congratulations. And uh, what's the last week been like? I can imagine kind of a whirlwind, huh? Yeah, it's been busy. Um, just getting back from Naples, we have our uh, coaches convention down there, and it's usually some professional development and some rest and relaxation, but not so much this year. Uh, very busy uh, in transition, so I'm, I'm checking in from my basement. What, uh, boy, it sounds like, uh, you know, the things that we've heard, I guess, out of the, out of the coaches convention, it sounds like there, there was a lot of big topics that were on, you know, that, that kind of were discussed uh, down there. Uh, what were things, I guess, that, uh, you know, struck you, I guess, uh, you know, are, are sticking with you in the back of your mind, Nick Garrett? I mean, I got down there a little late because the press conference uh, was on Tuesday. So my wife and I arrived Wednesday um, and, you know, they, they, I mean, there was, all sorts of stuff getting talked about. I don't know what will actually actually stick or come to fruition, but, um, you know, it looked like there will be some change in college hockey, but again, we'll see what actually happens at the end of the day. What, uh, what was the reception you received like this year? I mean, for years you've been there in an assistant coaching role and now all of a sudden you're uh, not only moving into a head coaching role, but with a, a new program, a new arena, all that. I, I can imagine uh, a lot of kind words from some folks down there. huh? Yeah. And you said it, there was so many people, uh, down there just being real supportive and happy for me um and it was nice to be able to give a little thanks back to so many people who have been a part of uh, my journey so far and helped invest uh or you know invest in me and, and mentor me along the way so it's good to see those guys and, and be able to say thank you in return what one of the big uh, obviously one of the big influences uh on you garrett uh, you know growing up was your dad your dad was a longtime high school hockey coach uh you know what, you know, I would imagine as you're going through this whole process, you're discussing different things with him, uh, you know, just describe, I guess, uh, you know, his thoughts that he, or some of them anyway, that uh, maybe he shared with you about, uh, you know, trying to take on, maybe try and take on this adventure. Oh, he's just super supportive. And he's, he's a, you know, he's one of my biggest fans and uh, has been along for the ride every step of the way. Um, and I think, you know, from him, you know, what you take as a high school coach is just really those core bare bones. Why are you in education? Why are you in hockey? And it's just to help kids uh, realize and, and achieve a, a, a better opportunity and chase their dreams. And, um, and that, and that's these, these high school coaches are certainly not doing it for the money. It's for the love of the game and, and for these kids. Um, and that's why I think, you know, just the same at the collegiate level is, is at, at our core, that's what we're about. I want to look ahead, obviously, to, to what's coming up for you and, and what the next year will be like. But first, we got a question from Patrick Nicholas. He said he wants to know, this past year's Gopher team, what is your most fond memory? Now, this is a tough question, I've got to think, because you think back to, to literally, you know, tragic situations that were dealt with, guys leaving, some great games, some championships, a Frozen Four, all that. I mean, this year really did kind of have it all. But when, when you think back on this Gopher season, what immediately comes to mind for you? Well, I think the, the easy answer is punching our ticket to Boston. But for me, the kind of culmination of everything um, is to walk out on the bench uh, in the Big Ten tournament final game to 11,000-plus fans uh, in a 3M arena that was absolutely packed. And that's what, it, that's what we all want it to be. Uh, that was the mission one Coach Motzko – uh, and myself and Gordo started this thing back four years ago is we wanted to see that happen uh, and to, to have our guys come together, to have those fans come out and support them um, in that moment. Uh, it, it just, it gave me chills. That, that's what it's all about. And in and, and those, you know, you talk about it in recruiting, you talk about it in the media, but to walk out on the bench and have our players get to experience something like that that they had never been able to experience in the past. That's probably uh, what was most special from this past season. Uh, Gary, we've, we've known kind of um, for about a year or whatever, the, that Augustana was going to be starting, you know, men's hockey. You know, when, when you heard that, I guess, was that, you know, did it already 
was already kind of percolating. Hey, might, this might be something that, that I'm interested in, or, or how, how, how did it come about, I guess, that you ended up deciding to, to apply for the job in the first place? I, when I first heard Augustana was uh, going to go division one and, and bring a hockey team down there, I thought it, you know, I thought it was, it was great. I thought it was something that was long overdue, but uh, in terms of my, you know, interest in applying right away or chasing that job, it, it wasn't something that came to mind quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And, and the athletic director down there, Josh Morton reached out to me at some point along the way and said, Hey, would you throw your name in the hat and get your application in and your resume? And I said, well, let me, let me go ahead and try to make a resume uh, <laughs> first. And uh, so I went ahead and did that and applied. And, and again, like with this process, uh, I kind of just kept working through it. And, and first and foremost was our guys at the University of Minnesota. Um, and I figured, you know, when the dust settles, just like Ben Myers was doing the same thing, like, hey, we got we got games to win. We got a season to finish here. And when everything is over, then we'll worry about the next thing. Um, and I mean, I, I, you guys, I don't know how many times people came up to me during the process and told me that somebody else had already accepted the job. Uh, it, I wasn't, trust me, I wasn't asking questions. I didn't really care who else was involved. I just figured if I was their guy, you know, it, it would end the way, uh, I wanted it to. And, and, you know, here we are now. One of the, uh, the elements that go into Augustana adding hockey, you know, the first program in the state of South Dakota, which is an exciting thing, but it started with the groundbreaking. They're building a new arena there. I wanted to ask you where that project's at and, and you kind of taking over the program. How much of your stamp do you get to put on that? I mean, do you, do you, uh, you know, are they at a point in the design process where, you know, you can say, hey, I want the bench here instead of here or anything like that? Or, or where is that process? I think the, the bench has been decided. They know where that's going. <laughs> but um, I think there is a little bit of room uh, for some flexibility and to alter some things and, and kind of have a hand in making it uh, our own. Um, but if you go down there right now, so they've moved to chapel, uh, you'll see dirt getting thrown around. There's heavy machinery on site. Uh, there's still other things they need to do to prepare for the actual uh, pouring of the foundation and all that stuff. But you can definitely tell there's, uh, there's stuff going on. I've had a few people ask me this question and, and I kind of know the answer, but, uh, but I'll ask it for all of them, uh, Garrett, you know, a lot, a lot of people have said to me, well, what the heck is Garrett going to be doing here this next season? Cause they're not playing any hockey. I, I, I asked that question. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to start the, on the list or like yeah. where? Go right ahead, uh, Garrett, give us your list. I mean, it, it... You guys, I don't have a helmet snap if somebody breaks one. I am getting <laughs> everything uh, from equipment to building a rink to hiring a staff to finding players to moving my family. Like the list goes on and on. Um, and I sit here and think like, wow, I got a whole year to do everything. I know that there's going to be a point when I'm like, I have so much to do and not enough time. Uh, so it will be a busy year. Let's, let's talk about your relationship with Bob Motzko. And I think, you know, this has got to go back almost 20 years now to the point where, you know, you were recruited to play college hockey for him. You wound up coming back to St. Cloud State, coaching alongside him, you know, following him to the University of Minnesota. What were the conversations like when, when you had to sit down with Bob and say, hey, uh, we're breaking up after 20 years or whatever, whatever it seemed like? I mean, you know, obviously you two have a great relationship, but, but you know, what, what was that conversation like? Yeah, I he's been you know, he's just been a huge support at every step of the way. And, yep. you know, uh, I think you, you know, you probably imagine it where, you know, you shake each other's hands and thanks for all you've done. And we're way beyond that. I gave him a huge bear hug. He was waiting with his arms wide open and, you know, and it, it's bittersweet for sure. But like, yeah, I'm moving to a different program and, and Bob and I aren't going to be working uh, in opposites or, offices adjacent from each other but you know we're always going to be together like this thing's way bigger than hockey him and I and and uh you know there's no one I'm going to lean on more than him uh over the next 16 months yep what uh you know the, the assistant coach I mean that that's kind of the, the the big first thing for you right uh you know you and I talked a little bit about this and you know we're uh, are you starting to, you know, get some applications? Uh, where, where are you guys at with that? And what are things, I guess, uh, again, just for, for people maybe who didn't get a chance to see the story, what are things that you're going to be looking for in an assistant coach? 
Well, we're early on in that process and, and the amount of people reaching out just speaks to the excitement about the job and, and how so many people think it's just going to be a hit down there. Um, and, and for me, the probably the most important thing, because my, my first hire as an assistant is going to be, you know, my right hand man in terms of recruiting over this next season, I may not hire another assistant until next summer at this time. Um, so I want experience. I want somebody who's uh, got a reputation of, of being a successful uh, identifier, a talent, a recruiter. Um, and it's just got to be somebody who shares the vision in terms of the type of player in person we want to bring to campus, how we want to play. Um, and that's, and that's really it. That's most important to me. And they got to be really well respected in the, the hockey world. And, and uh, that's what we're looking for right now. When the announcement was made that Augustana would be adding hockey and when the groundbreaking happened, all that, I talked to Josh Morton. And one thing that he stressed is geography, you know, that, that it's a nice location. You've got North Dakota to the North of you. You've got Omaha to the South of you. You've got the Colorado schools to the West. You've got the Minnesota schools to the East. It seems like geographically a perfect fit for a conference. I'm just wondering, you know, what are discussions like on that front? And are you play, planning to essentially play as an independent at first, hoping to, to get conference membership or what have the, conversations been like that way well in a lot of those with our president stephanie and and josh they've already they were happening way before i even popped on board yeah so i'm kind of just starting to uh you know get a little look under the hood in terms of what their plans are i think it would make sense for multiple leagues to be interested in in, in possibly adding us um just because of geographically like what you're talking about um but Nothing, nothing firm, nothing concrete yet. Um, uh, but like I said, like in the next couple of weeks, I, I want to, uh, you know, become more a part of those conversations and see where this can go. Uh, you know, Garrett, you, you, you played for your dad. You, you played for Steve Johnson down in Lincoln. Uh, you obviously played for Bob. Uh, you know, you always hear this from, from coaches. I, I'm going to try and take a little bit of something from, from everybody. Uh, you know, in, in terms of, you know, just kind of style play and, and, and stuff, have, have you started to think about that, I guess, a little bit about what, what kind of, you know, obviously, you know, with working with Bob for as long as you have and uh, at, St. Cloud, at St. Cloud State and at Minnesota, I mean, they've been very fast, up-tempo kind of teams. I mean, is that, are, are you kind of leaning that way or what, what's kind of your vibe, I guess, on the style of play you guys are going to go for? Well, we'll see what kind of players we can get too, you know. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's obviously I lean towards that. Uh, just a more entertaining puck possession, fast style of play. But I think too, the sneaky part about uh, Coach Motzko's teams and where, you know, because we're always uh, uh, growing and learning and adjusting our way of doing things is, is he, he really does respect that, uh, that grittier style of play. He, you know, an attention to detail, the one defending, uh, really shutting plays down and, and getting it back. Uh, in transition as quickly as you can. Um, and that's a lot of that is, is what I'm going to hope to implement as well. We're talking with Garrett Rabwine, the new and first head coach for Augustana University. The Vikings will start play a uh, little over a year from now, a year and a half from now about in, in their new rink that's being built in Sioux Falls. Talking to Bob Motzko, uh, one of the things he mentioned kind of offhandedly is that the coaches convention in the off season, he said 90% of the conversation used to be about officiating and about scheduling. And now Almost all of the conversation is about the transfer portal and how it's changed college hockey so dramatically and so quickly. I wanted to ask you, as a guy who's building a program, does that provide an opportunity, maybe a unique opportunity for you to, to you know, a new market of players looking for homes that maybe you didn't have before? Uh, I think for sure. I think that's just the world we're living in right now and, and an opportunity for us to, to tier some scholarships early on um, and do things like that. But uh, I I proceed with caution with the transfer portal. I don't intend to build a program based on, you know, finding transfers each and every year. Uh, I think it's uh, maybe a resource to supplement your, your roster uh, at times, but um, again, we'll, we're all learning. We're all learning year to year. This is just year two with it uh, really. Um, and it's changed so much. Yeah. Well, 
yeah, right. I mean, you know, one of the things I was thinking about, uh, you know, for, for you is, is you don't want to, <laughs> you want to go in that first season and have 25 freshmen. I mean, <laughs> that's, not, that's not the ultimate goal for you. I, I would imagine you're going to, you're going to try and kind of pick and choose, uh, you know, different people with different levels of experience, right? Yeah. And that, and, and, and it's going to be unique. It's, uh, you know, we're not, uh, we're not in a, Penn State or or Arizona State situation where they have club teams already operating on campus. We have we just have nothing, uh, so it'll be the first team on campus, and we got to build a roster. And uh, I think that's kind of the fun part is we're gonna get you know we're gonna be able to get creative and uh, make you know make something our own that really no one else has done before. You mentioned Penn State and Arizona State, obviously different situations, a lot more high profile programs, but do you reach out to Greg Powers or do you reach out to Guy Gadowski, these guys who have, have built programs from scratch, you know, not, not too long ago and, and kind of pick their brain for, for what was done in those places as well? Yeah, I've already talked to Greg Powers a little bit, um, you, you know, just in the early going uh, and then um, Fisher down there, the assistant coach uh, at Penn State, he, you know, his path runs through St. Cloud. Uh, yep. and, and, and he was, you know, part of recruiting that for, and he spent a year doing it. Um, and they have some, they have really some unique insights, uh, into everything. And, and again, like I said, like, we're going to have to do it our way, but I think there's a lot we can take and learn from them. You know, you, 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 we were talking a little bit about the, the geography. One of the, I think one of the really cool and, and nice things for you guys, uh, is, is going to be just you know, being in the same spot that the Stampede play, right? I mean, in the same city where you got the USHL basically coming to your, <laughs> to your front doorstep. So you, you don't have to maybe necessarily be, t you know, taking five hours to, to drive somewhere to see a, some of the better talent, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, it's a great spot for recruiting, no doubt. And the USHL team right in town, uh, got a North American League team over in Aberdeen. Uh, you have Minnesota high school hockey, you have the Sioux Falls power also in town. Uh, there's just a lot of players uh, right in that area. Um, and it continues to grow. Like ask my realtor, it's nuts right now down there. It's uh, <laughs> I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked at how many people are flying down and uh, trying to start, start to start a new living uh, in Sioux Falls. I was going to ask you about that part of it because you know you you have a wife you have a family you know what what was that conversation like and and you know how uh, how gung ho are, are the family to kind of have make a new start here and this opportunity? Well, it, it, they're they're all in now. They're fired up. Um, the first few days and early on, they were sad because they have so many friends here in the area and uh, we live in just a great neighborhood where uh, you know we're able to get together on weekends and and uh enjoy each other but um they're ready they're you know it was big for them to get down there and see it i think that's really when their mind was able to shift uh and, and everyone down there is so great and so welcoming uh it, it i anticipate it being a pretty smooth transition you're, you're gonna have to take them to like wall drug and and you know uh, mount rushmore and all that stuff now that you live in south dakota right that's required by law <laughs> i mean mount rushmore yes <laughs> unfortunately for wall drug i've been there before so um I, I wasn't well I was let down I, I, I there's a lot of signage we followed it all the way there you know this is it so I do I have a jackalope from wall drug still I don't it was in my college apartment I don't know if I left it or brought it with me <laughs> what uh your uh your kids put you know play hockey now you're, now you're gonna be part part of the the sioux falls youth hockey association is that uh, does that seem a little you know strange to, you know, and what are your kids excited i guess about about that or are they a little wary of of leaving the, their friends that they got now they're there so i think we're at we're gonna be sioux falls flyers right now i think that's the youth team down there and we were mounds view mavericks <laughs> um and they just wanted to know like do we have to get new colors we got to get a new helmet like what are we going to do and it's just I, I don't have the answers right now we'll figure it out when we get there you uh you work with two guys from laverne too uh you know brian deutsch obviously the sid there and then and then of course uh you know nelly is is a magnolia guy but you know sioux falls they've told me is kind of like where you go to shop and everything so are you seeking advice from those guys as well oh i it's going the other way. Like I had, I didn't ask any shopping advice. I asked <laughs> Nelly where I'm going to be hunting and fishing. We got some ideas narrowed down. So I'm feeling like I'm going to be pretty well taken care of. 
Uh, yeah, I'm thinking the uh, the pheasant hunting groups in South Dakota are going to be reaching out to you pretty soon. That's uh, it seems like it's right up your alley, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's at the top of my list. No one's called me yet, but maybe they've heard the stories about how I am in the field. So we'll see. So it, it, well, you mentioned Utahki. You know, one thing uh, one thing in kind of researching Augustana is I talked to some of the Utahki groups in Sioux Falls, and and they talked about just how big a deal this is, not only for the community there and, and for youth hockey there, but for the entire state, kind of giving kids, you know, that that something to aspire to that nearby. I mean, have you uh, been involved with those groups at all? And do you plan on, you know, kind of reaching out to that community as well as, as hockey grows throughout the state of South Dakota? Well, and I think, yeah, that's a huge part of it. And that's part of the responsibility as a, as a college program, whether you're at St. Cloud, you're at Minnesota, you're at Augustana, it's helping to grow the game and offer opportunities for these young kids to, to fall in love with hockey. Um, and it doesn't have to just be, you know, skate with the Vikings or youth camps or anything like that. It has to, you know, we have to have players visible in the community. We have to uh, make sure we're, you know, uh, exemplary citizens uh, and pushing things in the right direction. And I think that's the exciting part of this job too, is just being around everything down there. They really, they're really looking forward to it. Uh, they're fired up and, and uh, it's, it's so contagious. I mean, it fires me up come, going down there and, and getting to be around all of them. We, we talked a little bit about this too. I mean, the type of player that uh, you're going to go after, right? I mean, obviously, I mean, you want, you want talented people. I mean, that's always the, the first thing that, that, that jumps out at you, but this is also going to be a situation where, you know, it, it's going to take a little while for you guys to build where, where you want to be. And so, I mean, the, the, there's, you were talking a little bit about some of the personality of, of, of a player that uh, is going to come into play. What were some things, I guess, that you're going to look for, I guess, from a personality standpoint, Garrett? Well, I want, I want guys that are, are similar to me in the fact that they're excited to build. They're excited to be called the first, uh, Hey, we all know there's going to be, uh, ups and downs and challenges and, and, and everything with that. But I think there's a ton of opportunity. Um, and I think the players that are there, uh, have to be there for the right reasons. You know, of course, uh, they're going to realize they're going to get a great education. They're going to have an incredible college experience. They're going to develop as players and have a chance to play beyond, but there's also, what are you giving to Augustana? And I think, the blood, sweat, and tears that they put into the program to one day look back and, and be so proud of what they've done and helped create. That's important to me. Uh, and I think too, you gotta, you have to have some of that fiber in your personality to, to push through some adversity and get over some of the humps and challenges, keep a positive attitude, uh, you know, be a team guy in a sense that, that together uh, we can conquer anything really and push this thing forward. Okay, I've got to ask, a lot of years in locker rooms as a player and then as a coach, what's the most interesting superstition you ever saw a player have? What, 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 was, what was the weirdest thing a player had to do before they took the ice or, or, or anything like that, and, and, you know, that, that you were aware of anyway? Jeez. You're putting me on the spot here. This is a tough one. You know, some, you know, some guys always put on like one side of their equipment first or, you know, or, or they have a certain order they do things. You know, I've, yes. I've, I've heard of guys, you know, I heard of a, a guy that he, he had to skate between the two starting defensemen before he went to the bench before a game. I mean, just, you know, weird little stuff like that. Did, you, did anything stand out for me that way? Yeah, there's not just one. And it's probably because <laughs> so much of the weird stuff is just normal to me. Like <laughs> we all have a little bit of it in us. So we just yep. focus on what we do. Um, you know, Nick Dowd has a, he, he's all over the map. He's got too many to even name, you know, from, he had to use, go to the bathroom in the same stall, you know, no one even touched it. Uh, yeah, I mean, he just had everything going on. So there's, I mean, I don't know just one off the top of my head, but, uh, someone could write a book. I'm sure one day. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, how much, I guess, did you hear from, you know, uh, people, St. Cloud State people, former players, you know, former teammates, uh, you know, what, what's that, uh, what's that been like, I guess, for you, Garrett, uh, you know, hearing from, from uh, all your St. Cloud State connections? No, it's been incredible. And it's, it's, you know, it's humbling is what it is. You know, the people that have reached out from Blake Lazat to the Palings to Athletic Rather Heather Weems, 
Brett Larson, Dave Shayak, Nicole. I mean, it just makes like every, like so many people, you just like, are you seriously still following what I'm doing here? Like, I, you know, I'm a coach, you know, <laughs> so they, they, it's been awesome. Um, and I hope I've gotten back to all of them. I try, you know, I've, I've been sending some apologies for being late, but um, such good stuff. You, you talked earlier, Garrett, about, you know, the fact that everybody knew this job was out there, that your name was mentioned a lot, but you also had a team to coach you, all of that. I remember talking to Mark Coyle at the University of Minnesota about, you know, they knew they wanted, were interested in Bob Motzko, but there was this thought that, okay, how long do we wait until the Husky, you know, after the Husky season's over, how long do we wait before we contact him? I'm just wondering, you know, what the timeline was like for you. I mean, was your, was your phone ringing right after the Mankato game or, or, you know, what, what, what was that part of it like? Well, I'm more curious. How did he answer your question? <laughs> Um, <laughs> Mark, Mark Coyle said he waited till noon the day after the Air Force game and, and then sent okay. Bobby's first text. And <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that matches up. No, I, I, uh, I think I, it was about 48 hours later, yep. um, that my wife and I, um, went down there and saw, sure. saw everyone on campus, um, really. And it was, it was, uh, for me, it was actually because, through a zoom or anything like that. I, I was kind of familiar with some of the faces, but, um, for my wife, it was a lot like she, she was pretty gassed at the end of everything, but, um, yeah, it was, it's, I hadn't been anything. I hadn't been through anything like that. Like it was, uh, it was very thorough, um, very professional. It was well done. And, and both my wife and I on our drive back, we're like, wow, that was, uh, that was, that was quite the day, but, um, how exciting if we do end up receiving the opportunity. So. Yeah, what, what, was it intimidating? You know, because you know, uh, you know, when you when you became an assistant coach at St. Cloud State, I mean, a lot of my memory, I guess, of that is basically a conversation between you and Bob, and, and you know, Bob kind of seeing if you were interested, and and it kind of went that way. This is a whole different thing. I mean, this was like a, a very formal thing. I mean, was that intimidating? Was it difficult? I guess at all for you? Or? No, I mean, it wasn't intimidating. I guess. That's the weirdest part about it all is I wasn't at all intimidated. I felt very at home. I felt comfortable. Um, I think from my stops at St. Cloud in Minnesota that I, I was prepared. It was, you know, you're thrown into a lot of different situations. Coach Motzko lets us do a ton of different, you know, we're able to meet the media. We're able to talk to the radio, do all that stuff. So we're, uh, I think we're well prepared and ready for some of this stuff. Um, the questions were, I mean, I guess I wasn't trying to, I, I wasn't really trying that hard, to be honest. It's not like I had prepared answers that I was, you know, I had to hit on certain points. I just was having conversations and, uh, I really felt like at the end of the day, like if I was just myself, uh, and I was, you know, in, in our personalities and in our visions aligned for where this thing can go, that, that I'd be their guy, but Again, if, if I didn't get the job, I knew I had a good home. So I wasn't chasing. I got to, since, since we talked gophers a little bit, I got to take you back to one game and just kind of get your perspective of what it was like from the bench. Saturday night at Penn State, um, you know, a, a game where you, I, I think you'd won five in a row at that point. Um, you know, you, you got most of your lineup back. You got two of the three Olympians back. Game starts, and just like that, bang, it's 3 nothing Penn State. And as you know, at Penn State, when the crowd gets rolling, that's a tough place to play from behind. You know, So the general thinking among me and folks in the press box was, okay, we'll get out of here with a split. We'll get home. Everything's fine. And that was one of the, I think, maybe the most rousing comebacks I've seen by that Gophers team in, in a lot of years. From, from the bench, when, when Ben Myers says, hey, I'm back, I'm going to take this team on my, on my back. And, and you know, uh, Brock Faber has just stepped off a plane from China and is all of a sudden playing a shutdown defenseman role. How much fun was that on the bench and on the locker room? What do you remember about that game? Well, it was awesome at the end of the game because we did come back and the guys all rallied and our Olympians were in the lineup and they finally found their footing. But early on in the game, I had lived that not just for a period, I lived it for three periods um, where pucks are just – being shot from everywhere, everything's finding its way in the net. The students don't stop. Like it could, it could have very easily been a long night, but I think what, what I remember is that there was no panic in our guys. There was, 
they knew they were going to find a way and that and that was kind of an aha moment is the olympians were back everything was kind of settled back in place you know favors first three shifts he was he he wasn't in the rink but when he arrived we have 25 minutes accounted for like he he uh just a rock uh and it was it was it was really just a a consistent progression in our game Kester makes a great play then you see Lacole make a great play then you see Hublin on a power play you 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 just remember and it's just art and then we just rolled um and it was it was big but I think it, as a confidence builder as a group I think it was even bigger you have the unique experience of, of having gone to frozen fours uh, for two different programs now uh you know one actually is, was from your first season as an assistant coach and now obviously is in, in your last season just talk a little bit about the two different experiences that that those were garrett uh, I, i'm curious as to if the compare and contrast a little bit there well i think the the first one was unique in that this is just what we do. Right. Coach. Like, <laughs> like Gibby, like, come on, man. Like, here we go. Um, and the last one you get, you know, how hard it is. Like you, uh, you know, the blood, sweat and tears, uh, not only the players, but the coaches, they put like, it's their everything. It's their all day, a lot of their night in recruiting and building a team and the stress and the anxiety that goes into uh, these seasons, um, and, and then to finally make it. And then, uh, you know, and, and then anything can happen. Like you get in the tournament, anything can happen. You get in the frozen four, anything can happen. Um, so, uh, and two different things too, like so proud as an alumni, Drew LeBlanc, Ben Hanowski on that team, both guys I played with, um, pushing the program to the next level and then coming down to Minnesota, uh, this is this was part of the plan i came here it wasn't just a quick stop here you know here i'm in here i'm out i wanted to help i wanted to help shift things back to what minnesota should be um and it kind of was some validation all right we're doing a good job um and to both places it's the guys it's the players like coaches are one thing that the players play the game and uh great groups just when you have teams like that it's just gold and it's so fun to be a part of your that that first season at st cloud state there wasn't there like a running joke that where you were telling those guys that you 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 had been the missing piece <laughs> no i think i i don't think i'll tell you what happened bob and gibby started that in the media that oh yeah you know this is what Rabs is saying and uh it took a life of its own um, and you know me, Mick, I wouldn't start saying that. I know you would. I might've thought it, but I didn't say it. <laughs> You're uh, I, I think the best story you, I think you told me the story from, uh, 2013 when the Huskies went to, to Pittsburgh for their first frozen four, uh, you know, the team is greeted on the tarmac by water cannons shooting over the plane. And, and I think it was, you told me one of the Huskies actually asked if the plane was on fire or why they were doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there was that. And then there was the look in their guys our guys' eyes when brooks birch won the elite 89 award and he had to walk by the yale hockey team <laughs> that's fantastic <laughs> wow good stuff well we could tell these stories forever but uh, and and i'm sure we'll talk much more as things progress here with the start of uh, vikings hockey it's fun fun to say that for the first time and and uh, look forward to everything that's going to develop here in the coming months at, at Augustana as you uh, build a team and build a program. Garrett Raboyne, the new coach of the Augustana Vikings, we wish you best of luck and, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. And and by the way, you got to try Chislick. I've heard that's that's a South Dakota thing. <laughs> I got to try to get a, a Augustana Vikings hat. I got to try to get a, an office. I have to I have a lot of things I have to do, but I'll chisel. I'll 
whatever i'll try it shizlick it's it's little pieces of beef on toothpicks it's like a south dakota thing i don't know and and i'll say this <laughs> i i think wall drug is actually pretty cool the one that i think is overrated is the corn palace because it's basically just a basketball gym that they hang corn on the side yeah. of so you know i i'm, I'm not going to disparage south dakota it's a cool place but i i just thought that you're from cool. Warroad, jess you're from Warroad. yeah but we're not impressed by everything just being from Warroad, you know oh uh, I beg to differ. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Thanks, right. guys. Sounds like a good place to leave it. Thanks, Garrett Rapoy, right. on the Rink Live podcast. Awesome. Thanks.